Hello there PRG 102 students. My name is Melissa Halleck and I'm here to talk to you today about your assignments for this week in week one. Your assignment one asks you to do chapter one and two programming exercises. Chapter one exercises one through four and chapter two exercises one through three. So let's look first on how do you even get there. So in your course, you have a vital source ebook right here in this module section. You're going to click on that ebook. It's going to open another window and then it's going to say open your ebook in a new window. Go ahead and click on that and then come up here and boom, there's your book all nice and open for you. Now, if you do not have this table of contents open here, this right here on the left side is the table of contents. So just click on that and it will expand that out. In order to get to your first chapter, click on chapter one, and then you're going to go up here and click on the go to chapter one an overview of computers and programming and then your chapter one will load over here on the right side of the screen to get to your homework exercises after you read all of this material click on exercises and then when this screen opens click on the programming exercises and then click on go to programming exercises and it will take you to today's exercises. Now you can in Microsoft Word just type in one and the answer that goes to that. You can use your snipping tool if you want to draw things like that. So you're going to have number one make sure you have these programming exercises up number two number three and Number four, draw a flowchart or write pseudocode to represent the logic of a program. Remember, it is extremely important to read throughout the chapter because the chapter will explain the pseudocode to you. Once you get to find those exercises and you need to go to chapter two and read that and do those exercises, you're gonna go back in here to the table contents, you're gonna click on chapter two, and go to chapter two here with the blue link and it will load right here in the right side. So you notice it's chapter two, elements of high quality programs. Then again, of course, to get to those exercises, you're going to click on the exercises here and then you're going to click on the programming exercises. And in chapter two, you need to do numbers one right here, number two right here, and number three right here. And then in this quick video, I want to talk to you about what variables are. I want to talk about these assignments because this expects you to explain if the name seems like a good variable or not a good variable. So how do you know that, right? It's in chapter two, but I still want to talk about that with you. And then number two, how do we know if these assignments are correct and what the heck even is an assignment? So you want to make sure that in this course you are learning your terminology and trying to understand what that terminology means because as you advance through programming, that terminology will be referenced and you're going to need to understand what those terms are. So if we look at this, how do we know if this is valid, not valid, or illegal. A variable is something that we make up a name. And when we make up this name for a variable, we have to make sure that it's going to be relevant to whatever it is that we're using for. For example, if I'm going to add two things together, then I might declare a variable called sum. And if I'm going to declare this variable called sum, then I'm going to go say, hey, I want to add together this or that, and then here's what the answer is going to be. And I'm going to hold that in this variable called sum. Now, every time we're in a Kind, any kind of language, I don't care what programming language you're doing, this variable right here 
is going to be used a lot. This is one of the first concepts that's super important to learn. So this is called sum. And what is this? Well, this is called a type. So what we're doing is we're telling a compiler that we're going to use to put our code in that we're going to create a variable and the type is going to be a number. And so we're going to call it int sum. We have to declare a variable in the beginning of our program. Every single variable that we're going to use, we have to tell the compiler, hey, we're going to use this value. Now, depending on the language, there can be all kinds of different types. Here, we have an integer type and we have a string type. Those are the first two types to learn. The difference is an integer is just a number and a string is a list of characters. So if we look down here where we initialize the variable, this is a number and this is a string of characters. So I could even put an exclamation point inside here. I could put a dollar sign inside here. And as long as your string is in quotes, whatever is inside that quote is what's going to print to the screen for the user. Every program that we create must have variables. They must be declared in the beginning of the program and those variables must be initialized meaning that we have to give a variable a value or we just simply can't use it there are some rules to naming these variables so basically what i'm saying here is we have a program that we're going to put code in and we have to follow these syntax rules because if we don't follow them then the program that we're using to write our code in is going to have errors and it's just not going to work right so different languages may have different rules but these naming variable rules are consistent across the board on all the different languages when you name a variable the first letter cannot be a number. So if I create a variable, one, two, sum, that is illegal because if it causes an error in the compiler, then that's what's called illegal. Now, even though you can't start off a variable with a number, you can use numbers within your variable. It just can't be the first letter. Uppercase, whenever you name any kind of variable, is very distinct from lowercase. So oftentimes, we don't use uppercase unless we're putting two words together, such as emp name, emp number, emp id. And so the second word would start with a capital and that's called camel case. We often use that simply because it helps us to help our eyes focus directly on that individual word so we know exactly what it's used for. We cannot use, we have Java here, but let me just mark that out because it doesn't matter what programming language you are in, we cannot use designated keywords in that program as variables. The name that you name that variable, it can be any length, but you have to have one word with absolutely no spaces whatsoever. So when we're looking at this assignment, when we think about those things, okay, we want to name a variable where it's appropriate for what we're using it for. If you were to look at the variable with just the letter D, is that really valid? Well, it may not cause any syntax errors, but it is also certainly not valid. So let's look and see in a coding program how a variable actually works. So if I have Visual Studio open here and you can see using system, this is all in C sharp. You may not understand what all this is for you, but I just want you to understand 
variables and how that works. So currently I have a line, it's called console.writeLine, and then in quotes we have hello world exclamation point. We have our parentheses. All of these are syntax rules and commands. Okay, so console.writeLine work together in C sharp to tell the program to write hello world to the screen so the user can see it. The user isn't going to see the parentheses or the semicolon or the quotations here. The user is only going to see what's in between those quotations. If I run it, I'll show you what that looks like. So right here you can see it says hello world and that's exactly what we have in between our quotes. So say that we wanted to write something though that was in a variable because one reason why we may want to use a variable is because while the program is running the value in that variable might change. If I just do console write line hello world there's really no way to change that value from a user or anyone else. So let's create a variable. I'm going to create a string variable because this is words, okay, words, any kind of exclamation point, those kinds of things, that's what has to be in a string. I'm going to call it welcome. And then I'm going to make that equal hello world. So again, we have to have our parentheses, a string no matter what language always at least has to be in quotes. For C sharp we must also have parentheses around it and we must also end our statement or command with a semicolon. So if I was to create this variable welcome and then I can just go in here and erase and just type in welcome because this is the variable, I want it to print to screen the value that's in this variable. Now let's watch that. So it also prints hello world. So interestingly enough, if you created it so that the user could put in a value, this could change and we print whatever value is in that variable. This is the reason why we use variables. Now if I was to start with a number, because remember we first letter cannot be a number. So this is not going to be valid if I do this. Now you already see it's going hello there what's going on. Now if I run it it's going to give me an error. And it's going to say oh my goodness you really messed up because you did not follow the rules. So as you can see the first letter cannot be a number. After the first letter, numbers 0 through 9 can be used. If I put 0 on the end here, and then remember I always have to spell it the same everywhere that I use it, it will run OK because 0 is not in the beginning of the variable. And as you can see, it ran and it says, hello world. So you can, after the first letter, you know, use numbers if you want to. Remember again that uppercase is distinct from lowercase. So if I wanted to change this variable to where it says welcome home and I didn't put the capital in when I wanted to call this variable to use it, it's already red underlined and saying, no, 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 you're being so naughty, you're not following the rules. So you can see when I run it in Visual Studio, it's really going to complain. I absolutely have to put in the capital here, and then it's going to be much happier, and it will run the way that it's supposed to run. So these are the reasons for the rules that we have. You could name this any length. You can use capitals, but then you always have to create that same capital as well. And it has to be one word, no spaces. So if I did this, then all of a sudden, this is no longer correct. If I run it, 
I'm going to get an error. So that's illegal because that is a syntax error. So if I take it back, now if I did want that separation, I can get away with using an underscore. If I hold my shift key and the line in between the zero and the plus and equal sign, as long as it is spelled correctly, again, in both areas, this will run properly. Hello world. All right, that's all I have for you today. I hope you're way, way smarter on what a variable is and how to use it. Have a great day, everyone, and please contact me and let me know if you need any help with anything.